Welcome back to the Mind of Watercolor, all you minders out there. You know what I wanted to do today is draw. I just have this urge to draw and share that with you guys. I really didn't pick up a pencil hardly during the 30-30 challenge. But what I wanted to talk to you today about is pulling watercolor into your pencil drawings. How that works, does it work, can you do it, uh, how you would do it just some thoughts on how I do it. And I'm gonna probably do a drawing for you here. Uh, I think first, the, the best thing to talk about is what you would draw on. This is probably my standard sketchbook right here. This is my, I call this my doodle book. Uh, nothing important goes in here. These are just like experiments and what if I did this, what if I did that. How does this pen look? How does this pen work? That's what I do in this book. This is not, I don't call this a formal sketchbook. And this is like regular bond paper, 65 pound weight paper. This is probably not the best. You can see I was testing it. This is probably not the best place to draw and bring watercolor into your drawings. You can see here how it bled on the back. So what would you use if you're gonna draw and then watercolor over it or water bring watercolor into it? Uh, there are a ton, ton of multimedia or mixed media books out there. Uh, two of my favorite are the Stillman and Burn. This is the Stillman and Burn Beta. This is the Stillman and Burn Zeta. These are both their heavyweight books. The Beta is cold press, meaning it has a slight texture to it. And the Zeta is smooth. It's my favorite for ink and wash. So it would be a great choice if you wanted your, your pencil drawings to be really kind of smooth. I don't mind a little texture when I'm doing pencil drawing, so I'm probably going to use something cold press. Here's another one as a mixed media, and that is the Strathmore Mixed Media. This is actually 100% uh, cotton, I believe. This is Strathmore 500. doesn't act exactly like watercolor paper, but you know when you're bringing watercolor into drawing, you're not using a lot of wet washes or a lot of layering. You're going to use very simple washes, and so you can get by with a lesser paper. And this Strathmore Mixpedia is a pretty good one. I haven't done a lot in this book. Just tested it mainly. But it's got a slightly cold press texture. It takes pencil really, really well. So you can do some really nice drawing on it, and then if you want to bring in some color, it shouldn't be a problem. So well, that's another recommendation. Uh, however, the one I'm going to use today is this B book. This is the B watercolor sketchbook. And this is 100% cotton watercolor paper, and it's really not all that expensive. It's got a bunch of pages. Now, it's not high quality cotton watercolor paper, but again, for a sketch and wash, line and wash, pencil and wash technique. Actually, I've done a couple things in it already. I, I did this, posted this to Instagram. You probably saw it if you follow me on Instagram. These were just studies. Or I posted this at the beginning of the uh, World Watercolor Month, and I had not tried this paper yet. This is something I'm getting ready to post on Instagram. Just These are foliage simplification studies. Uh, it is a cold press texture book, and I noticed that one side is a little bit rougher than the other. The top side, or the right hand page side is a little bit rougher than the back. Not a lot, but just enough so it's noticeable. Anyway, I'm gonna draw on this side, the rougher side. But as I said, I think any mixed media book is gonna do you well. Uh, you just need that weight so that you can add the water. Most of what you're gonna do is carry by the weight of this, the values and the line in the drawing. All right, so let's get started on this sketch. And as usual, I'll put the links below to all of those mixed media sketchbooks in case you want to try one of those. I'll show you what I'm going to be drawing. Pretty interesting guy here. This is off of a site called Unsplash where you can get free royalty free photos. I'll put the link down there as well. It's a really great site. Unsplash.com and they even have an iPad app. Oh, uh, another product thing. You know me, I'm always trying stuff. Uh, these are Kohenor woodless pencils. Normally I draw this stuff with a mechanical pencil. Um, either the very fine leads or the very, or the slightly thicker, I think, three millimeter, two millimeter leads. 
I forget. Saw these the other day and I wanted to try them because they go all the way to a 9B. It's just very dark. I'm using an HB right now. Woodless pencils are just that. They're pencils with no wood. You can see it's all solid graphite. And I guess you may, some of you may be familiar with how some uh, artists, especially ones that draw a lot, will sharpen with a knife and expose a long piece of the lead. This essentially accomplishes the same thing. You can turn the pencil on its side and get, you know, expressive strokes and whatnot more than you could with a wood pencil. So that is all that's going on there. Otherwise, it's exactly like any other graphite. Uh, basically, when I do this kind of technique, it's, it's, a, it's all about the pencil. I mean, I'm doing a pencil drawing. I'm not really putting a lot of thought into color. So, uh, and there are such a huge variety of ways you can do this. I mean, you can, I'm going to do a fairly involved drawing today. And it's going to be fairly large. Uh, this is an eight and a half by 11 sketchbook, but you can do it on small, uh, very rough drawings. You can do it on, you know, very finished, highly shaded drawings, really a lot of flexibility. Um, but, uh, back to what I was saying, this is all about the pencil. At least the way I'm talking about doing this. I mean, you can do it any way you want. You can actually do quite a lot of watercolor technique on top of pencil if you want. But the way I'm showing you today, it's it's mostly about the pencil. So I, I, I try to let the pencil drawing show through. And let that be primarily what I'm looking at. So when I add watercolor, and you'll see that soon, uh, I'm doing it very lightly, very faintly. And I'm letting all that drawing show through. Um, I'm also being more detailed in the face, uh, eyes, nose, mouth, than I am the surrounding areas like the clothing. That's just a way I like to do portraits. I think it's more interesting. A good center of interest technique. Uh, all this is with the HB. You'll see me soon, and I'll point that out, you'll see me soon get out the 8B to bring some pop into the really dark areas, but I'm going as far as I can with the HB pencil first. When you see me turn the pencil on its side, I'm trying to go for something that's a little less linear in stroke. And that's something that these woodless pencils do really, really well. So I'll turn it on its side and just kind of get a, a broad, flat stroke and feel with the uh, graphite. Now this is a great way to start, too, with watercolor. If, if you're not comfortable, most people, most artists, aspiring artists, are, are pretty comfortable with graphite. That's just about where every artist starts. It's where I started. You know, I was drawing with pencil, with graphite and charcoal, you know, when I was 10 years old. It's also a great way to, to prep for watercolor because it is a transparent medium, if you think about it. You have to protect the whites and you have to build value into the darks. It's the, you, you do the exact same thing with graphite that you do with watercolor, if you think about it. So it's a good way to warm up and get your mind ready for a session with watercolor. And if you want to paint over a graphite drawing, you can do that. And the amount of toning and shading you put in with the graphite is totally up to you. You can just keep it mostly lined with just a little bit of shading in the dark details. What I'm showing you right here, the reason I slowed this down to real time, you saw me hold my hand up. I'm showing you how a little tip on doing portraits 
uh, eyes. Eyes are usually one thing that makes people's portraits off. A lot of times you'll have one eye looking one way and the other one looking a different way and it won't seem right. That's why I hold the hand up. If you look at each eye separately, cover one eye, you can see which eye is looking the wrong way and you can kind of adjust. Now I have switched from an HB to an 8B, extremely soft, dark pencil. I'm just going in some of the darkest areas to add extra pop, extra depth. And I'm not going to add a whole lot more pencil than what you see. So you're just seeing me darken areas that were already put down. And I'll just pop in the uh, photo here again just so you can see where I am now and, and the reference uh, that I've been using. So as we get into the painting, I'm using a Princeton Neptune quill. It's a synthetic squirrel imitation. Holds a ton of water. I'm using a fairly big one and it's great for doing this kind of task because you're almost doing the same sort of thing you would do with a marker. You're just adding some local color, just some spot color. And you'll see by the end of this I treat the color very simply. I'm letting the drawing, the tone of the drawing stand on its own and I'm not going to get very deep or intense with the colors. I'm just enhancing the drawing and when I'm done I want the drawing to be seen. I want to see those strokes and that slight texture and you know the beauty of the graphite. Now like I said you can get a lot darker with the paint and I've actually done them where I've gotten darker and and most of the lighter pencil just goes away or you can't see it um, but I'm not going to handle that that way this time and this is just really fun to experiment with um, it's nice because you can just color a little bit of it and and let the uh, drawing stand on its own in the other areas or you can just color lightly and and very palely. Um, you, you can try different things. Um, you can, as I said before, you can do it on a rough, rough sketch. You can do it in a very finished drawing. Just keep in mind that the more paint you add, the less you will be able to see the lighter, more subtle pencil shadings or strokes. His beard was nearly white. So I'm going to leave that mostly alone. I'll put in probably a, a few little slightly blonde lowlights. And you can see on his clothing, and it was a black and white photo, so I have no idea what color his clothing is. I just decided to make it cool to help pop out the face, the facial tones. But you can see I'm just dabbing, basically. I'm just splashing in just a tad bit of color really really think um, on a pencil drawing like this that less is more you can almost stop at any point in this and and there's a real danger of going too far and you know destroying some of the freshness and by the way um, you know some of the graphite will travel with the washes even though it's not water soluble graphite some of it will especially those little 8b areas uh, hb doesn't travel as much but the 8b areas where i added some dark pop you will see some of that graphite travel with the wash so you, that combined with the fact that there's graphite under your wash everything is going to look grayer but that's fine i mean i'm i'm happy with that look i'm going into this knowing that that's the look I see this first as a pencil sketch. So this is all about the pencil. A wonderful way to do plein air. I mean, you can do this with anything. Flowers, landscapes, you name it, basically. And here you can see me dotting in and swiping in some of those very pale blonde low lights. I'm going to keep that white look to his beard. Really interesting character. 
And I love the way that he had modern glasses, but he has this sort of old world Far Eastern look to him. Pretty cool. Love interesting faces. Now here's about the only place that I brought in a detail brush. Everything else was done with that quill. Uh, it's just to strengthen the rim. Uh, I could have gone back with a dark pencil, but I just decided to bring some dark paint in and uh, strengthen the tone on that rim so you could see it a little more like it was in the photo. This was really fun. I mean, probably the whole process, including coloring, took a couple of hours. And the coloring went really, really quick. Most of the work, as I intended, was done in the pencil sketch. Here I'm using a gel pen to add a highlight on top of those glasses. And I'll probably just stroke in a few single hairs over the dark contrasty areas just to kind of blend those beard hairs in with the shadows but yeah it all went fairly quick and uh, enjoyed doing this one a whole lot really happy with the outcome thanks everybody appreciate you watching patrons look for maybe some other examples of this on patreon or sketchbook peaks or for the video extras level and we will see everybody in the next video. Bye-bye.